Whatever you think of what she said, that's what happened. A couple days later, Trisha went on the television talk show The Doctors and claimed that her coming out video wasn't monetized. What were some of the responses that you got to that first video that we just watched? What were people saying to you on your YouTube channel? Just coming for me, just saying that I was looking for attention or clout. I mean, the thing is, is those videos get demonetized now on social media. Like, you, you don't make money off of those videos. Anything LGBTQ, anything mental disorders, you, you can't make money. So everyone just <laughs> discrediting me for thinking that I would use something so serious. My audience is all LGBTQ people. Like, to that... I would mock it or make a joke of it. Like that really offended me more than anything or that I'm a joke because of how I look. A few days after that, Trisha made her first appearance on the H3 podcast. At some point during their discussion, Ethan and Ella asked Trisha if she truly hadn't monetized her coming out video. Trisha maintained that she didn't, but when she then pulled up the video's analytics on her phone, Ethan revealed that the video was not only monetized, but that Trisha had made $8,000 off of it. The trans video has over 3 million views. Many people are claiming that you do that uh, in part for YouTube revenue. Is that true? No, because YouTube doesn't monetize uh, like LGBTQ plus videos. Like if you talk about it, they don't put it, they don't put ads on it. Also, I demonetize any of my scandal videos. My my first H three my response to you guys was demonet or I I didn't monetize. It. I wasn't demonetized. I monetized it. All my vlog <laughs> squad videos, those are all not monetized. I showed it on Instagram. So like, I don't monetize anything. I of went to your channel yesterday, and that video gave me two free mid rolls, two of them. Yeah, you no, but YouTube does that. I can I literally can show you. I can screenshot it and show you. Like it'll say like even on my demonetized or ones I did not monetize myself. Like any ones I've made. Uh, YouTube will put their own ads on there, I guess? No. I don't know. No, I swear. I know how YouTube works. It doesn't work like I that. can show you. I literally, I mean, I don't you have You are getting phone. paid for that. So, um, <laughs> if you are, in fact, making money on that video, does it change uh, any of the the claims that people No, make? because here's the because thing. Because you, you were even on the doctors on television saying, oh, I don't even make money from that video. Yeah. But you do. I don't. I'm going to show you. I don't. <laughs> oh my so gosh. now, okay. Now go to that video. How do I do? You do it. Okay, I'm not, gonna, okay. I'm not trying to expose anything that's private, but... It's here. all demonetized. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, what is it? Uh, apology. The name is coming up regarding my... I am transgender. Three million views. Green icon. Monetize. And I'm going to tell you exactly how much money <laughs> no, she made. <laughs> she made $8,000 from that video. <laughs> Wait, you have to cut that because YouTube will literally no, take away my monetization. You can't say how much you bullshit. made. That's also an uh, urban legend. Really? Yeah. Okay. For you the made record. $8,000 from that video? That's crazy CPM. For the record. For the you record. Didn't know? I didn't know. No, I swear. Really? Why would I? I swear on my life. On, okay, I love Jesus. Okay, so now that you've made $8,000 from this video, how do you feel? I mean, it's fine. I, if I was, if I, like, can I show you my other ones? That are not, I literally don't monetize it. Like, everyone's like, I don't I care about your other videos. I just care about this one. Okay. You went on television and said it's demonetized. Ethan was exposing Trisha for lying on national TV about not having her coming out video monetized. For you to try to frame the situation as though Ethan was shaming Trisha for how much money she made on a video while dodging her questions of how much money he makes off the podcast is, quite frankly, fucking disgusting. Trisha wasn't asking Ethan about how much money he made off of his podcast in order to expose some perceived hypocrisy. She was doing it to deflect from Ethan's point that she lied about not monetizing her coming out video on national TV and Ethan wouldn't play ball. Going around saying to your in your defense and on yeah. television too that I don't make money from this. I swear on my so life. So why would I do it? So I just think that it kind of undermines that whole argument that you're doing this out of the, just to tell your story, but clearly you, you made 8,000 bucks from it. Promise. Tell me how much you made on the video, like your last video. Tell me how much you made right now. $2,000. Look it up. Can I see it? I showed you mine. Let me see yours. 
It's only fair. No, it is, I, it is I, fair. It's not fair. She <laughs> That's said. That's not fair. So you're gonna expose my. She which said, I said. I'm exposing how much I made, but I. I never take it said away. that I wasn't making money from it. You were. Yeah, but to and prove I said to me that you, you got ads, and so you opened that. Fine. That's fine, but you're saying it's an urban pro- legend. Yeah. Like if you talk about my money, so yes. let me talk about your money. So that way, let me see on the last podcast how much you made. You don't have to. Let me just see it and share, and share it out loud. Hold up. That's only fair. Well, we no, we do have a YouTube contest <laughs> you have if to, you want. You have to edit yeah. that out then because no, it really I don't. Is, I know I'm not editing it out. No, that's bullshit. You're not gonna get demonetized. I guarantee no, it. Like, that's an urban legend. Because- nice try, Brody, but the clip you played doesn't prove your point at all. I mean, look what they say about them being millionaires. So it's my fault you got that wrong because I'm making fun of billionaires. You know, billionaires the. Uh, the most disenfranchised group of people in America, by the way. Let's all fucking let's all well, stick our neck the out for billions. They're the smallest minority in the world. I mean, yeah, we've got millions, but these guys have got billions. I mean, the billionaires are the bad guys. That's not what Ethan was saying, you slimy piece of shit. The context behind Ethan's point in this clip is that he was summarizing the beef between him and some ordinary gamers. Some ordinary gamers is a guy who made this video about me saying that I was a hypocrite because I donation shamed Jeff Bezos, which didn't happen, which is a funny thing because it just didn't happen. And then, so I tweeted at him and I says, yo, just so you know, very politely, really, I said, just so you know, um, the comments I made about Jeff Bezos were like 15 days before he donated $100 million, so I couldn't have donation shamed him. And uh, in response to those tweets, he made, and, and in response to our charity, he made a second video taking credit for my $100 or $100 donation, being like, ooh, I wonder why that happened. Mm-hmm. And further saying, you know, I did, Ethan didn't donation shame Jeff Bezos, but it's hard to give him credit because he's always, this is to quote him, he's always punching around billionaires. I was like, really, dude? So it's my fault you got that wrong because I'm making fun of billionaires. You know, billionaires, the uh, the most disenfranchised group of people in America, by the way. Let's all fucking, let's all well, stick our neck out for billionaires. the smallest minority in the world, if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, that's true. That is true, yeah. actually. Yeah. He was not trying to downplay the fact that he was a millionaire by arguing that billionaires are worse people, you fucking mongoloid. He was criticizing some ordinary gamers for simping so hard for billionaires that he was willing to lie about Ethan donation shaming Jeff Bezos. Of course, if you set aside your bias and actually watched the goddamn clip, you would have understood that. But no, this video was made in bad faith, so of course you took the clip out of context and framed it in a dishonest way. God, we're almost done with this shitty video because I am starting to lose my will to live here. I mean, how much can you pander to try and act like you're normal? I mean, anybody who's not completely stupid knows that having millions of dollars is not really normal. Uh, it's, uh, there's not millionaires out walking the fucking street everywhere. They weren't pandering to anyone at all. Stop lying about their fucking point. I know you guys think we're rich. I know everyone thinks we're rich and like, uh, and okay, we're rich. Hundred thousand dollars is a fucking lot of money. That hurts. <laughs> I want hundred thousand dollars back in my bank account. Trust me. No, but it doesn't hurt. It I, feels it, good to nah. give. <laughs> but they know their audience, and they know that they'll believe it. I mean, they know that their audience is dumb as fuck. I love how Brody says this when later on in that same clip that he cut out of context, Ethan goes on to say that he was kidding about that comment. I know Aren't you sure? guys think we're rich. I know everyone thinks we're rich, and like. Uh, and okay, we're rich. Hundred thousand dollars is a fucking lot of money. That hurts. <laughs> I want hundred thousand dollars back in my bank account. Trust me. No, but it doesn't hurt. It I, feels it, good to nah. give. <laughs> isn't it better if it hurts? Isn't it more? Isn't it more? Um, isn't it more admirable if it's painful every time? Right? Because if it feels good, then you're like, hey, everybody take my money. I'm feeling happy. It hurts me every time I give that money out. And that's what makes it beautiful. The sacrifice. I guess it depends. The, no, it doesn't hurt. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it's a lot of money no, is my fine. point. No. It's unbelievable how much of a liar you are. So to end this, to any H3 viewer, it's time to either demand better or even better yet, it's time to move on.
I mean, are you really gonna stand for this? Stand for what? You haven't proven a single fucking point in this entire video. I dare any of you guys watching this right now to give me one valid argument that Brody made in his video that I didn't already debunk. Wait, that's right. You can't, because all of his points are horseshit. H3, you're done. And we all know you're done. And it's time to get. 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 God damn. Ugh. What the fuck was that edit there for, dog? Was it supposed to show how funny you are? Because I'm not laughing. I'm cringing. And before we go, I think everybody deserves to know where all of their money and support has gone over the years. And I'm talking the lawsuit money, FUPA fund, the payday two donations. Where's all that Teddy Fresh merch money gone? I'll tell you, it's gone to a $9 million Bel Air mansion. Absolutely beautiful. Oh no, rich people bought a mansion. The horror, it's the end of the world. Also, I find it kind of odd that you lumped in Teddy Fresh sales as one of the sources of allegedly embezzled revenue for Ethan and Gila. Where's all that Teddy Fresh merch money gone? What are you implying? That the money they earn from their Teddy Fresh merch sales shouldn't go towards buying a mansion? That's weird. Comrade Brody, back at it again with the anti-capitalism. Why don't we all take quick little tour. Let's go. Brody is about to perform an ending skit that is a parody of the MTV show Cribs, and it is without a doubt the worst part of this entire video. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Really, Alex? Out of all of the lying and speculation that Brody does, the ending skit is what triggers you the most? Yes, really. I fucking hate this ending skit with a passion for one of two reasons. One, it completely breaks the presentation of Brody's video. Remember how at the very beginning this video was framed as a segment of the fictional HP Najus? Coming to you live from Orange County, California with news anchor Brody White. This is the HP Jews. News that's specifically about Jews. It makes absolutely zero sense for this video to suddenly end on a parody of MTV Cribs. Brody doesn't transition from the new segment to the ending skit in any way whatsoever. He just delves headfirst into the ending skit, as though he had forgotten how this entire video was being presented. You know, for somebody who claims that Ethan and Ela are lazy and don't put any effort into their content, I find it ironic how Brody just lazily tacked this skit on to the end of his video. second reason that I don't like this skit is because, well, I don't know how to put this kindly, so I guess I'll just be as blunt as possible. The jokes are unfunny, predictable, and borderline anti-Semitic. The only jokes Brody makes in these last five minutes are that Ethan is fat. So as you can see, I'm currently in the backyard overlooking this beautiful view of the pool and the backside of the Klein Mansion. Enormous yard, plenty of space. I'm sure Ethan takes full advantage of all of the space, doing plenty of activities. Uh, that's how he keeps so trim. Um, but this beautiful kitchen is where Ethan and Ela Klein cook very nutritious meals. Um, I mean, well, well, there's a bag of McDonald's right there, and also a bag of Wendy's, and also some Panda Express, I believe. Um, so it does make sense why Ethan is so fat now. He's so fat, and it's causing him to be such a bitchy person. This house has six bedrooms and seven and a half bathrooms. That means seven and a half toilets. I guess you just cut one in half right down the middle. Uh, but anyway, that's a lot of places to take shits. Now, when you're eating Wendy's, McDonald's, Panda Express, you name it day in and day out, you're going to have to take a lot of shits. Here's one of their seven and a half bathrooms. This one here does have a full toilet in it. And I believe Ethan forgot to flush because there is a mammoth of a turd 
just chilling inside of the toilet. Smells of like a quarter pounder or a Big Mac or something. Ethan's iconic cough isn't funny. Let's cough our way to Bel Air <coughs> and see what Ethan and Ela are up to. I'm breaking in to give you a tour of their brand new home today on YouTube Cribs. <coughs> Was that funny? Was that funny? Was that cough funny? Yeah, I didn't think so. And that Ethan and Ela are Jewish. Come one, come all, if you're ready to ball. Jewish style! First, we'll touch base with Ethan and Ela Klein of H3H3 in their unnecessarily huge Bel Air mansion that would make the rest of the Jewish community puke because of how much it costs. Okay, so we're gonna start off in the kitchen. Just a little disclaimer, we're gonna have to keep it down a notch. Uh, we do not want cot. I do believe they're home. Um, and I don't know if any of you knew this, but if you get caught inside of a Jewish person's mansion, they actually throw you into an oven and put it on 425 degrees and let you slow bake. It's very twisted. Now, I don't mind people making edgy jokes about race or religion or all that jazz. One of my favorite comedians is George Carlin, and he was all about saying edgy shit. I get tired of people talking about bad words and bad language. Bullshit! It's the context that makes them good or bad. The context that makes them good or bad. For instance, you take the word nigger. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the word nigger in and of itself. It's the racist asshole who's using it that you ought to be concerned about. We don't care when Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy say it. Why? Because we know they're not racist. They're niggers! <laughs> The difference is, when George Carlin called Richard Pryor a nigger, it's because he's making a point about how context can change how offensive words are. When Brody makes fun of Ethan and Ela for being Jewish, the only point he's making is that they're Jewish. Come one, come all, if you're ready to ball. Jewish style! First, we'll touch base with Ethan and Ela Klein of H3H3 in their unnecessarily huge Bel Air mansion that would make the rest of the Jewish community puke because of how much it costs. Not only that, but when this entire video has been nothing but Brody making dishonest arguments and taking Ethan and Ela out of context as often as possible, I start to suspect that these Jew jokes might be coming from a place of genuine malice. It's great knowing that everyone who's bought Teddy Fresh merch, uh, which by the way, why would you even wear some of this shit? You know what I'm saying? It looks like, uh, you know, eight year old kids uh, would dress their Sims character up in this type of shit because they think it's silly. Um, but you know, to each their own. Uh, personally, I'd wipe my ass with it and that'd probably be about it. Oh my God, I finally made it all the way through this fucking video. I deserve a fucking medal for putting up with all that bullshit. Some money would be nice too, but give me a fucking purple heart at least. Anyway, let's get on to my final thoughts. This commentary video is without a doubt the worst one I think I've ever watched in all my years of being on YouTube. It contains virtually every single mistake that one ought to avoid making when creating videos of a similar nature. Framing your arguments in a dishonest way. Presenting selectively edited and out of context videos as evidence for those arguments. Not expanding on your arguments. Cherry picking your evidence outright lying to your audience about particular situations, and overall just not doing any general research on your topic. I guarantee you that if Brody had spent just 5 minutes reading any of the articles and watching any of the videos that he referenced in his video, he'd come to realize that most of his arguments held little to no water at all. I've never seen any other videos from Hooray Perfect, but looking through his catalog, it's abundantly clear that he was inspired by H3H3 Productions. Brody's videos cover the same topics as Ethan's, his videos are titled in similar ways to Ethan's videos, and he even dresses just like Ethan, right down to switching out the beanie for a, um, I think it's called a parka? I don't know. Point is, Brody was inspired by H3H3. 
He even mentioned that he liked Ethan's older content in this very video. Back really quick to some H3H3 roots, where he had a lot of popularity coming up and a lot of people actually liked the guy, myself included. You know, it was a fun, silly little channel, calling out people for misbehaving and it's the way it should be, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with your videos being inspired by another YouTuber. I myself started doing cartoon reviews because I was inspired by the work of the mysterious Mr. Enter. However, what I've come to realize over the course of making this video is that there is such a thing as fan entitlement. Based on how vitriolic and misleading Brody's video on H3H3 was, I'm going to make my own speculative point about what his intentions were for making it. In my opinion, Brody was a huge fan of H3H3 Productions and their old reaction videos, but the second that Ethan stopped making those videos, which he never really stopped doing, but let's ignore that because Brody sure did, and started focusing on the H3 podcast, Brody began to get angry at Ethan for what he saw as quote, selling out. That frustration slowly built up over the years, culminating in this dumpster fire of a video where he grasps at every straw imaginable and makes as many leaps of logic as possible to paint Ethan in the worst light that he can. He didn't care about being truthful or charitable in his arguments, he was only interested in tearing Ethan down as a person. And that is fucking sad. Fuck Brody and fuck this video. I'm done. I'm Alex the Critic, and if you've actually made it all the way to the end of this video, then you're a madman, and probably have nothing better to do with your time than watch two fat losers on the internet whine about another fat loser on the internet. Okay, in all seriousness though, I do appreciate all of you for sticking with me all the way to the end. I'll see y'all next time when, hopefully, I'll cover a lighter topic. Short steps and deep breath, everything is all right. Chill.